horizontal and vertical curve information is some of the core information in highway design plans. And in this video, we'll take a look at some of that real critical information for horizontal and vertical curves. In this example, we'll look at a North Carolina Department of Transportation design plan, starting here with the cover sheet. And so we'll see a couple of key pieces of information here. We have information about the project length, an overall view of the project, including match sheets. So in the upcoming plans, in order to fit it into a sizable, to a reasonable number of pages, the project is broken up into multiple sheets. So we see here labeled as four, five, six, and seven, the project is broken up into. For this example, we'll just take a look at one of the sheets. We also have a vicinity map showing us roughly where the project is in relation to the other roads in the network. We are given where the project begins, station 11 plus 50. This is known as the L line. So the L line is the main road of the project. It is intersected with other roads that are known as the Y lines. And so we see those are numbered Y1 through the end of the project over all the way over to Y9, the last intersecting road uh, that intersects with the L line. And the project ends at station 51. So looking into one of these sheets, we see this can be very noisy. There's a lot of additional information provided on these sheets beyond just horizontal information. For this sheet, we are looking at the plan view. This is a view from above, so this is going to be the horizontal curve information. We also have traffic volume information at the bottom left of this sheet. For our curve-specific information, it's going to be in this table at the top of the sheet. We have the single curve that's on the L line, then we're also given information about curves that are on the Y lines. For the curve on the L line, we're told it has a PI station at 33 plus 79.93. It has a delta, an intersecting angle, so this is the angle between the back tangent and the forward tangent. And we're told that with the parentheses, the RT, that it turns to the right. So going along the back tangent, we're going to turn to the right an angle of 58 degrees, 59 minutes, 19.8 seconds. This curve is a degree of curve of 13 degrees, 38 minutes, 30.7 seconds, which corresponds to a radius, which is presented lower down in this table, of 420 feet. The curve has a length of 432.41 feet and a tangent length of 237.57 feet. The super elevation or the SE in this table is 4%, 0.04. So that's the design super elevation for this curve. So that's the maximum super elevation this curve will have as it transitions from normal crown to that design super elevation. And we're told that it has a design speed V of 35 miles per hour. So here's, here's the curve that we were presented information from in the table. We can see there's a lot of other information provided here, including about the property owners and the existing structures, drainage and landscaping features. So lots of things going on in this graph. So we need to kind of get past the noise and really look at the core pieces of information. The PC, the point of curvature, is labeled. This is at station 31 plus 42.36. The PT is also labeled station 35 plus 74.77. And we can also see if we can look past the lines, uh, the, the other lines that show hydraulics and other features, we can see actually some cross section information. So this is in a normal crown section. We're headed towards the curve. We can see lines with arrows at each end. That means the water is going to flow from the center line to each edge of the road at a slope of 0.02. As we move along, that outside lane is going to rotate upward. So it's in that, that increment, it rotated up from 0.02 to 0.01. The inside lane is still at a slope of 0.02. That outside lane continues to rotate upward until we're flat. So at this point, we have our inside lane at 0.02, our outside lane at 0.00. It's flat. This is also known as the point of adverse crown removed. That outside lane continues to rotate upward, so now the entire road is sloping towards the inside of the curve. 
the outside edge of pavement at this point is at a 0 0.01 slope. The inside lane still hasn't started rotating. We now have reached reverse crown. This is when the entire roadway is sloping towards the inside of the curve at 0 0.02. Now both the inside and outside lanes are rotating together up to a rate of 0 0.03 and finally 0 0.04. The 0 0.04 is a little bit hidden in this drawing because the other information that is shown on top of it. So now we're at our design super elevation which will continue through the curve until we start the transition back towards normal crown where we start rotating the pavement back to that 0 0.02 on each side water flowing away from the center line towards both edge lines. So that's some of our important horizontal curve information. We should also have a sheet with vertical inf vertical curve information or maybe multiple sheets. This is an example again along the L line. So looking at some of the core information for vertical curves, this will be set up on an axis. So on the X axis, we should see distance. Typically this will be in stations. On the Y axis, we'll see our elevations. So for one curve in particular, this curve has a PI at station 44 plus 75 with an elevation of 519.7. We're told this vertical curve has a length of 320 feet and a K value, which is the rate of vertical curvature, of 33. We know the design speed from our earlier horizontal alignment, but we're given this also for our vertical design of 35 miles per hour. We can also see our entrance grade of positive 4.768 and our exit grade which is a negative or a downhill grade of four negative 4.96 percent so that's our some of our core information for our vertical curves so that summarizes some of the, the critical components within a highway design plan for horizontal and vertical curve information as you can see, especially the, the horizontal information can be very noisy, very busy. So it's important to, to recognize the key characteristics that you'll need to understand what the horizontal design is telling you and what's going on.